we're going to be focusing on brushwork. And by brushwork, I mean in terms of paintings that are more direct. A direct style of painting, or another term would be a la prima, which means kind of all at once, to where we're trying to use brush strokes to make the painting look more like paint. As opposed to paintings that are thinner, using glazes to build one on top of another, and the whole structure is built on detail and no brush work. This is not that. This is where we're using thicker paint, more impressionistic, so the brush strokes show and kind of help with the form and the direction of the form. So, an example here, this is a painting by Emile Groupe, 20th century East Coast landscape painter, and all his brush strokes follow the form. In other words, back here in the trees in the distance, they're vertical strokes. And that type of brush stroke makes the tree stand up. You can see it on here, on the foreground, the biggest tree. It's shorter, choppier vertical strokes, but they're vertical nonetheless. You could go, you know, it's got strokes like that, but the vertical strokes show the vertical uh, form. Here we have a slight hill right below the biggest tree. And you can see on the light strokes, his strokes are following the form. It's, you can't see the strokes literally but you could in the original, and they're just following the form. Wherever the, however the land moves, that's the direction of the stroke. So if it's really flat and horizontal, then the brush strokes are more flat. Same thing here in the shadows. I, I can see the strokes here going this way to follow that form down, this way to go. So the brush strokes show the form, in this case, of the ground or the snow. Same thing in here. There's a little value change in the strokes here, which are slanted, and the strokes here, which are a little flatter. But they're two different sets of strokes going different directions, and it just shows the form. Uh, in other words, if I did this whole hill or this flat plane right in here, if I painted it like that, it would just stand up. So I don't want to do that. I want to paint it more like that. And then the hill that goes down to the creek, my strokes, I want to go that way. So that goes a long way to help the value show form. And also, along with following the form, the brush strokes also kind of give direction, or the flow of, in this case, the water. You can see the strokes are, he pushes and pulls them this way. And they really show up pretty evidently. He has another one here where it shows up even more. You can see... Even where there's just a sky reflection, the strokes kind of go like that. And they just, you can see more in the massed reflection. But big strokes, let's say they just wrap around that reflection there, and it really goes to show the flow of the water. Same thing with the boats. He's not using straight strokes like that. He is using strokes that wrap around the boat. Same thing with that bass, about one big brush stroke there for that green. So again, the strokes, brush strokes, follow the form of whatever you're painting. Let's get to one here. This is by Hanson Puthoff. The strokes for the tree, they're real vertical in here, or sometimes they can just be scrubbed in, but then the lights will follow this way. Now you can see a little bit of the lights on the edge there, real thin but they follow the form more, wrapping around that way, and then the darks go that way. Same thing on the rocks. The rocks, you can really see it. And the trees, I usually paint the trees just like the rocks. The vertical strokes for the upright part of the rock, and then the light strokes follow the form. And again, the brush strokes go a long way because they, they show up. It's a very direct painting. And we're using thicker paint to show more light. So this style of painting, very direct, the focus is simplifying shapes and showing the light. Real nice light here. And it's the thicker paint that makes it stand out. So when you apply the thicker paint, you have to have brush strokes that show structure and direction. So that's what we want to do. Now, an example of the opposite would be... Um, like photorealism. This is, uh, I think this is Frederick Church, one of the earlier paintings, uh, the Hudson River Valley paintings, early 18, 1800s. And this is rendered the same way. 
there's no desire to have brush strokes show. They want to focus on the detail as much as possible. They want to render with the paint instead of showing the light. Oh, this has nice light in it. It's very detail oriented. Now, there's some real nice things like this tree, you know, the contrast, the dark and light. But I want to come in here with big, thick brush strokes of paint in these light areas on the ground, on the trees. It just creates more contrast, looks more like paint. So that's what we're not doing. So now going back to, again, the more vertical strokes suggest the taller objects, strokes following the boat, following the flow of the water. So really think in terms of following direction and form. And there's two things you have to have to have uh, brush strokes that really suggest the light, that help you suggest the light. And that's confidence in both values and color. And if I'm not confident in the value I'm laying down or the big shape, simplifying the shape, then I'm going to be a little more hesitant. My paint's going to be thinner. I'm going to kind of dab at it and try and render what I see. But if I can see things in big simple shapes and put it down with bigger brush strokes, I'm going to be more confident to lay down a thicker passage of paint. So you have to kind of step out and, and just have more confidence in simplifying shapes, values, and use thick paint. Because thick paint will force you to be more decisive. So as an exercise, keep your paint thicker for the study. I always want my paint to be thicker, but to study brush strokes, keep your paint thicker, which forces you to make a decision on big shapes of values. So I'll go into the photograph here. So before I can have confidence in using thicker paint, I want to separate all these values. It's backlit. The sun is way over to the left and it's in front of the viewer. So everything that's upright is going to be a dark. Even the light fence is all in shadow with a little bit of highlight on the top. So I know everything upright, the small clumps of grass, like right in here, the smaller trees and shrubbery, they're all going to be upright and darker before I get the lights on top. And the lights will follow the form around but the darks will be vertical and make everything stand up. So when I see something like that, when I look at this and there's a lot of verticals, I want all the verticals to have upright brush strokes. So even though this looks real thin, I can see through it, I want fairly definite shapes for this upright stuff. Then it comes to the lighter then dark accent underneath. Even this, it's a lighter dark, but I want to block it in a dark before I hit the lights on top. The trunks, obviously dark, uh, but all this stuff in here, the shrubbery in front, I want to find a shadow pattern that stands that up. And it won't look like the photograph exactly, but I'm not trying to render detail. I'm trying to suggest shape, big simple shape, to be able to better suggest what the light's doing. Then on top, I will follow the shape like that with thicker brush strokes. The darks will be thick, but not as thick as the lights. So in some sense, the shrubbery here, and I'll have a lot of variety of color, but this will give me the light value, dark value. I can put as much color as I want in each value, but I just want two values, maybe a dark accent at the base. But when I can simplify like this, then it's a lot easier to be more confident on my brush strokes. Then the brush strokes on the ground, you know, I'll follow this hill where it flattens out a little bit. The brush strokes can flatten out. You know, I can change them a little bit, but they're going to show the direction of that hillside. The house, houses would all be vertical. And if I want to do short, choppy, horizontal, I can. But usually if I have a few horizontals, I want to go back to vertical eventually. But uh, the verticals make things stand up. Trees back in there. Then the lights, again, follow the form a little more with the lights. Sunlight hits the wall here, and I'll go, again, this direction. The shadows kind of follow that way, so they'll be a different direction. So really think in terms of direction, and every brush stroke... Even though I usually have to go back and alter or change or correct them, modify them, I try and think of every brush stroke as a finished brush stroke. 
so I'm not trying to sneak up on it and dab at it. I load up the brush, decide you know the value, the local color, whether it's thick or thin, light or dark, and just put it down in one big brush stroke. And if it's wrong, I can scrape it and start again. But think in terms of every brush stroke, kind of a finished brush stroke, even though I can still go back and modify it. You know, the shrubbery here, all that green will be vertical. Then the lights. You know, that, my brush strokes can vary in width. These aren't varying in width because it's a stylus on the computer. But I have thicker brushes, brush strokes that I can press down harder and it gets wider and let up and it gets a little thinner. But you can see the direction of that light brush stroke shows more form. And the direction of the brush strokes on the flat plane or the slanted plane here shows more form. These I would all stand up as verticals. They're in the shadow. They're not real dark shadows. They're fairly light shadows. But that brush direction will show the and it really helps you make a decision on values. You know, one simple decision. I don't have to have 40 darks in here in these bushes. I have to have one overall dark broken up by the lights. So simplify your values, your shapes, and make definite decisions on those brush strokes.